The law came by Moses. But mercy and the law came by Jesus Christ. Now I've set it up for you right there. <clears throat> now let's see who's thinking. This is a quick recap. Watch. I'm going to see who studied and who did not. <laughs> Hebrews 8 and 8. Hebrews 8 verse 8. For finding fault with them. For finding fault with them. The them there is the Israelites. He said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So this new covenant, Tony, it says with the house of Israel and, the, and with the house of Judah. Why is it saying it is two? Why didn't he just say with all Israel? When you said the house of Judah, it's talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi being born uh, one house of the rest of Israel. So why is it written like that? There was a what in Israel? Right, there was a split in Israel. Thank you, Tony. That's why. There was a split in the kingdom. Right? For finding fault with So them. wait, wait, wait. So this new covenant is not, that's the scripture you can smash a Christian with. Ask them, who's the new covenant with? They'll go, all nations, all races. Read it again. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Come on. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. So stop right there. He says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. When we came out of the land of Egypt, what was the covenant we were given, Iran? Sacrifice animals for sin. Right. Sacrificial laws for sin. Sacrifice of animals for sin. Where would y'all go? Let's live. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Let's go there. Let's start at verse 4. Let's show you the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. That place to go is Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 verse 4. <coughs> For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. See, that's why the Lord said, I'm going to give them a new covenant. Not according to that old covenant that I gave them when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. Come on. Wherefore, when he cometh, no, yeah. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Come on. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. See that? Come on. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. All them sacrifices is written of Christ. That's what it all was symbolic of. Come on. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not. Now that I had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the old covenant. Go ahead. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. He taketh away the first covenant, the first agreement, the old agreement, the old covenant. That he may establish the second. The new covenant. Everybody see that? Go ahead. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Y'all see that? Amen to that. Now, this is beautiful what we just read because this scripture right here smashes all the churches mm -hmm. that are here trying to gather all nations together. Because once you've explained that the Old Testament was about Israel and then the New Testament, you can't have something new if you didn't have something old. So the New Testament is only going to pertain to those who had a, co who had a covenant that became old. And so how in the world are we going to read verse 10 and say, by the which... Well, we are sanctified. How are you going to read we and say it's talking about all nations? Right. That ain't got nothing to do with the nations at all, period. This is all Israelites. So right. all the choices that are set up on the planet Earth is no different from a whorehouse. It's, it's no different from a crack house. Okay, they ain't got nothing. I don't care how many Bibles they have in there, how many dumb Israelites they got in there jumping up and down. That ain't got nothing to do with the Most High's Word. Nothing. Exactly. Acts 13. Now here's the follow up behind that. 
Because Hebrews 10 told you what the sacrifices consisted of. In the Old Testament, it was animals. New Testament is the body of Christ. Now to show you the spiritual understanding, Acts 13, 38 and 39 tells you what they could and could not do. Each covenant. Acts 13, verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. This man is Jesus Christ, come on. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Right, from which you cannot be justified by the law of Moses. I'm going to give you an example. Give me Leviticus 20, 13. We're going to read that whole verse, because a lot of times we start mid-verse. Let's read the whole verse to show you that you cannot be justified. Could, 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 could he read 30? I don't want to. We're going to come right back to okay. it. We're going to come right back All to right. it. I just want y'all to see what you could not, a law, you could not be justified with animal sacrifice. Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with, woman, with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Tony, what does it mean, their blood shall be upon them? Zephaniah. It means there's no sacrifice that can atone for that sin. Their blood has to be shed. Right, their blood has to be shed. There was no get two goats and one ram for that sin. Mm -mm. The Bible said their blood. Read that Bible part again. Their blood shall be upon them. Their blood shall be upon them. Spill their blood. Kill them. Back to Acts 13 now. Wait, wait. Deuteronomy 22, 22. I'm sorry. I just want another example. Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman, married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lie with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. See that? They shall die. Both the man and the woman. So under Moses, there was no just say, uh, go before the Most High and ask for mercy, or get a, uh, under Moses, get a harvest and a lamb. It was none of that. Die. Die. That's why when Christ came, and they said, Moses said, kill this woman. What sayest thou? Christ said, he that is without sin, you can kill her, but if you were sinless now, you cast the stone. So that's, mm, I did such and such the other day. Let me go home and shut the hell up. What you gonna say? <laughs> See, that was heavy what, what was just brought out because like the elder was bringing out before, like it says in the book of Hebrews, that there shall be no remission of sins without bloodshed. Back then you had to get the two lambs, the ox, the goat, whatever it was, whichever, uh, whichever animal which was required by that law that pertained to that kind of sin you had to bring. So the point is blood had to be shed. But there was some sins that you could commit that no animals could be sacrificed for you, but the Most High still wanted blood. He wanted your blood to be spilled. You put to death as a result of it, but the sin is gone. But you had to die. That's how serious that thing is. And what's heavy about that confrontation when they brought the woman before Christ, could you imagine a crowd, mm -hmm. and everybody's already used to the custom of Moses, and they're testing him now to see what he's gonna do, and he shows a public display of mercy. He makes it clear that everybody things change right on the scene. We gotta show mercy to this brother. Okay, so that's heavy right there, that they're sitting back, because he's ignoring them. He don't even look at them when he says, he is without sin, you cast the first stone. He's right in the sand. And he's showing everybody without even making eye contact, the law done change. Mercy now. Acts 13, 38. Acts 13, verse 38. And be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't want to deviate from the point, but I just wanted to just talk about some wording that's in verse 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. This is what the Christians come up to you with. They come with you and say, say that all men are justified, and they all that believe, all that, what does it say? And by him, all that believe are justified. And you got Edomites, Arabs, Africans, everybody talking about that they, that they believe. 
But look at what the next part in the same verse. See, the reason why I'm saying this is because nobody should be trying to cut up nobody once you get into this Bible. This Bible is against all nations and is for Israel. You have to understand that. What it says right after that, it says, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So, who was under the law of Moses? Once you understand who the he is, then you understand who the all men is. So that ain't, again, that ain't talking about all nations, that's only talking about Israel. Exactly. So now, let's go to Galatians 5. Here's another one that'll hit you in the head with. Here comes a Christian with a big Bible. Brand new. Brand new. And here's a brother on the street. He he gonna read Galatians 5 and 1 to you. Let's see him get out of this. <laughs> Galatians 5 and 1. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What they're talking about. Mm. Read it again, read it again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What they're talking about. Raise your hand. Only one brother got it. Two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do it on the Let me who don't who don't have the hand. I want to see if they got Okay, Phil. The liberty that Christ has made us free was the grace that we can repent for our sins. Give me a name for that. Another name for it. The new covenant. Okay, go ahead. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Uh, with the old covenant. Very good. Very good. Very good. So that bondage is going back to animal sacrifice. He said, don't be entangled in that. Because if you're entangled in that, what's going to happen to you, Joel? Yeah, under the old covenant. What's gonna happen to you? You're gonna get put to death. Because you can't keep that perfect. You're gonna mess up, and if you ain't got the particular sacrifice for the particular sin, you finished. Read that again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. So the liberty Christ has made us free in is the new covenant. Wherein we are justified from what, Ezekiel? No, justified from I'm, Leon, I mean, I'm all? All things. All things from which you cannot be justified by the Lord Moses. You know why this is heavy? I remember some of the brothers was telling me that you still got groups out here that's talking about sacrificing animals. Yeah. Those I are couldn't believe that. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. Because if that's the case, when we sit, we sit every day, you understand? Well, I don't mean willfully. Whenever sins would come up, you have to find those particular animals for that particular sin. Where in the world is a Negro going to find a, two goats or a turtle dove? Or an ox. You know how much an ox, you know how much a lamb costs? So the most high, that's the most high is a mastermind. He had that mercy set up so that when we go through our captivity, getting our butts whipped like we deserve it, we give us a chance to come out. And for those of us that's going to turn our back on this grace, that's why it says that suppose ye in uh, Hebrews that you, why well, said that you trample on him again? Because he gave us the chance to come out of this. With a clean slate, and you're going to turn your back up. You deserve death. You deserve death completely. You deserve it. So now, Acts 15. Like I tell you, if y'all want to understand the writings of Paul, you must read what? The book of Acts. So now, let's look at the wording in Acts 15. Because remember that argument that came up. Moses or Christ? That was the argument. We going to follow Moses and animal sacrifice or Christ? It was a big confusion. That the Pharisees brought up. Now watch this. Watch with, I believe it's Peter. Who's speaking in Acts 15 and 10? Is it Peter? Good. Acts 15, verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke? Where are we at? Oh, Acts 15, verse 10. I couldn't find it. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? Which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. What they talking about, Josiah? What is the yoke upon the neck of the disciples? 
which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Exactly. Everybody heard what he said? That's exactly right. Because that was the argument in Acts 15. To go back under the old covenant of Moses with animal sacrifice. And Peter and them said, no! We under Christ. The new covenant has been ushered in. Okay? The part where it says, it's not that our fathers nor we were able to bear. Where else is that written also? Where else is that written? The part where it says, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Where else is that written? Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody else. Neither our fathers nor we were able to bear where else. You better earlier. You better somewhere else earlier. I want someone new. New hands. Isaac. Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8. Yes. Let's Hebrews read eight. that again so we can see it. Now, I'm glad you just did that because what that shows is that we have to be able to see the same meanings out of different scriptures. Right. Even though it's not using the same. That's why a lot of y'all didn't get it. Because y'all looking for the exact words. Mm -hmm. The words are written different, but the meanings is the same as what we just got to read. And that's what we have to be able to obtain. I thought when, when Barnabas said Hebrews, I thought he had it. But that was it. But he was in the right book. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 8 verse 8. For finding fault with them. That's it. He's that's saying, where? Explain it. For finding fault. So here it says he found fault with them. Back in Acts 15, it says, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. That's the part. The same, the same thing. He found fault. They couldn't bear it. They couldn't keep it. So because they couldn't keep it, the Most High found fault with them and established the new covenant. Israel couldn't keep that law. Sacrifice perfect. They could not do it. Exactly. Can you imagine? Daniel and them in Babylon, serving in the king's house. Uh, excuse me, king. I've got to go sacrifice. Are you crazy? <laughs> you gonna do it? None of our when we went through the Syrian Empire, the Persian Medes, the Babylonian, we couldn't stop and go listen. We had a sacrifice. That was destroyed. Yeah. Right, and that was the problem in Egypt. No, he's in Egypt. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Pharaoh said, "No, yep. y'all ain't sacrificing nothing." Mm -hmm. So now we all messed up. Now we can't do it now. Right, we can't do it now. We all messed up, but that's why we needed the new covenant in Christ. 